How are you guys doing? Good, how are you? Great. Good. You all just came from practice, and I appreciate you guys sitting down to talk about this stuff. My cause, my cleats, has really caught on and, and gives you guys a platform to talk about things that are important to you and do something about it. We're obviously all here together because there's a common theme that we believe strongly in mental health. And I know you each have your own personal attitudes towards it and experiences with it, and that's what influenced your pleats. And I have mine on today too, by the way, um, if you didn't notice yet, but these are for a place called Home, a South Central LA place that helps kids enrich their lives and have something to do after school, a safe place to go. Um, so I just thought I'd mention that. So each of you chose a cause that has a common theme in terms of mental health. I want to hear more about each cause and um, what inspired you to choose them. So Matt and Lance, you chose the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. And Daniel, you chose Movember. So if you don't mind sharing just a little bit about the causes and why you chose them. Daniel, maybe we'll start with you. I'm looking at the mustaches on your cleats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it was really just just a way to get involved and help out, you know, kind of give back, um, you know, being going through my own struggles with, um, you know, being injured and dealing with the mental health that came, you know, the the ups and downs, ebbs and flows that came with that, um, you know, just really wanted to, you know, now that I'm on the other side of it, really, you know, send a you know, message out to some people who might be in the same situation, um, you know, let people know that there is help if they need it um and you know just kind of be kind of a a guiding light and and give back in a way a guiding light yeah and i think you're right that's so relatable if you and you mentioned going through injury and with that comes some sort of mental injury a lot of the times um and i think everybody's dealt with injury this year haven't you yeah, yeah. in some form yeah <laughs> how has that affected you mentally and emotionally well, I mean, I've gone through, uh, I mean, this year I just had like a little, little injury, but, uh, in 2019, I had a pretty major knee injury. I tore, uh, my ACL, MCL, PCL, dislocated my kneecap and took like 10 months for me to come back from that. Um, but that was a difficult road for recovery and, um, you know, coming back from that injury, I I didn't realize the mental toll that it would take. And so um, I had a lot of anxiety and which kind of led into a depression during the 2020 season um, because of it, just because everyone was like, oh, we want to see the old Matt. We want to see like how great you are. And I put a lot of pressure and stress on myself to make sure like they can't see that injury that I had. I wanted to like work so hard and you know, the season like started out pretty well. Like I started week one and um, I just kept on it kind of snowballed, but it's definitely um, something I didn't realize. Like as much as you do the physical rehab for an injury, um, you also need to do it mentally um, to gain that confidence back to, um, you know, say, hey, I can play football. I, I went through this injury, but I'm not going to let it affect me. Um, but also just telling yourself, like, give yourself some grace and um, saying it's okay you went through it. It happened for a reason. And, like, there's things that you can, uh, you're going to deal with, but doing it in a healthy way. Yeah, so it sounds like you really took some good things from that, too, that you can apply now in terms of mindset and attitude and motivation. Um, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And how about your injury experience and your mental Yeah. So for me, I've been, uh, you know, thankful enough to never really like deal with a, a serious injury, you know, nothing along the lines of, you know, recovering for 10 months, you know, it's only been a couple of weeks for me, but, uh, just as far as like my mindset and just where I get, you know, anxious and I start to feel pressure on myself is just, um, what, you know, when I'm not performing or playing to my expectations, you know, I have high standards and high expectations for myself. So, um, kind of, you know, on the opposite side of what you're talking about as far as injury, but, um, yeah, so just how I get through that is just, uh, you know, like my preparation and just being able to, you know, be confident in that and just try to ease the pain, not the pain, but just ease the, ease the stress that, uh, that comes with, you know, performing and playing at a high level. Mm -hmm. 
And do you find that the tools that you wind up using to cope with injury and setbacks in general transfer into your everyday life and you know situations that come up um, that you might have to deal with? Yeah, I mean, there's always going to be ups and downs in life. That's just you know how life is and how how it goes. But um, yeah, just I try to surround myself with people you know that I care about and care about me and want the best for me, and just try to put myself in a good situation to where um, I don't I don't always have to feel like that stress and just that burden on my shoulders that you know maybe I'm not performing the well is you know performing the way I want to and just um, like I said, surrounding myself with uh, just great people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Daniel, do you want to add anything on that front with injury and... I, I mean, honestly, I think really not only just injury, but the, the game of football teaches you so much about life because that's, I mean, that's all it is. It's really just how many times can you get knocked down and get back up? And, you know, there's going to be hurdles. There's going to be, like Lance said and, and Skur said, like it's going to be ups and downs no matter what. And it's really you just got to roll with the punches. And, you know, as much as you exercise, you know, your physical muscles, it's your, your mental too. Um, it's not always going to be sunshine and rainbows. And I think accepting that reality and, you know, understanding, you know, that it's not going to be always fantastic and just being mentally prepared for that is, yeah, I think you, you help yourself out in the end. Yeah. And it, it's true. Like those ups and downs are just part of life. You mentioned, you know, it's not always sunshine and rainbows. And then there's this heavy topic of suicide. So just getting back to the cleats, um, Daniel, why don't you continue and talk a little bit about Movember and and what that means to you? Um, really, it's just, you know, I think it's very important that, you know, people don't feel alone. And I feel like, you know, a, a cause like this really just gives people, you know, a, a group that they feel like they belong to. So when you're going through those struggles and, you know, those dark times that we talk about, it's you have, you know, people that you can lean on, an organization you can lean on. Like, you you know, other people are dealing with the same stuff. You don't feel like um, you're different or something's wrong with you. You understand that there is a way to get through it. And, you know, there is light on the other side of the tunnel yeah having someone at least someone makes such a difference yeah in being able to cope with life lance how about you with the american foundation for suicide prevention what does that mean to you yeah so this uh this really hits home uh with me um i'll just get a little personal here and when i was in eighth grade my best friend uh, connor mills he uh he took his own life in eighth grade and um, you know that's something i gotta you know live with for the rest of my life and for me i chose this topic because I don't want uh, family members, friends, you know, classmates, peers, just all, all of those, you know, all those types of people to, you know, to go through that. You know, I, I never think that you know, no matter what you're going through, you know, the, the answer is never to, to take your own life. And I want I want to spread awareness to that, not only to people who are, you know, dealing with, you know, mental illness, but, you know, just like family members and friends. So then when they do see someone going through that, you know, they have the right the right tools and just are they're able to you know be there for them. And, you know, try to make them feel that they're not alone and that taking your own life is, you know, is not the answer. And if you or anyone who was close to Connor had known that he was considering taking his life, how would an organization like this, how could that have potentially helped? Uh, you know, like, like I just uh, just mentioned, um, just, just being able to, you know, first recognize the, uh, you know, like the symptoms, I, I don't know, like whatever, but just being able to recognize it and then having the correct tools to, you know, be able to help. You know, I understand that, you know, a lot of us aren't, you know, a psychiatrist or therapist and that's what some people need, you know, as far as mental illness, but just being able to just be a, be an ear, you know, a shoulder to cry on, a shoulder to lean on, whatever it is for, uh, for your loved ones. That's so true. And, you know, as a psychologist, I know that this is one option of many. And it's not for everyone. And so really it can just come down to having someone in your corner, having someone just be there to listen. Yeah, and just, just being able to let them let them know that you care about them and you love them and you know that you're gonna be with them through this, you know, thick and thin, you're gonna be through it all for them. Yeah, yeah. And now Matt, you are also, your cause is the same organization. Yep. What prompted you to choose that? Yeah, so similar. Um, 
it's a very personal uh, story as well and connection. Um, in March, my dad took his own life. And um, yeah, it's obviously very emotional to talk about. And um, But, you know, I think from that, you've learned so much about obviously mental health, getting people help, um, seeing the signs that someone is struggling. And um, yeah, as soon as, you know, that's something that obviously is very close to home. And, um, you know, through my dad's passing, um, we've set up a memorial fund for him um, and have raised a lot of money and awareness. Um, and for myself and my family, um, just really taking a deep dive into like mental health, making sure like if something's wrong, like really seeking help. Um, and you know, I think it's been a big void in our family, but it was also kind of a wake up call, um, for all of us to, you know, seriously take inventory of where we are mentally. Um, I've got two other brothers and a mom and, you know, as soon as like my dad passed, like within, you know, the next couple weeks after, you know, all of us were in therapy, um, making sure that, you know, we're all talking about this because it was very obviously tragic and sudden. And, um, yeah. And I just want to bring awareness to this issue as well. Um, that it's, you know, affects people of all ages. Um, my dad was an orthopedic surgeon um, for 25, 30 years. And so, yeah, it's just um, shedding light and bringing more awareness to people who, yeah, who may feel alone, who don't see a way out. Um, and yeah, it's just um, with our platform, I think it's great that, you know, we're all able to do things that we really are passionate about and that do hit home. And yeah, I think it's uh, just another way for me to share my dad's story. The more I talk about it, the easier it gets. And um, yeah, that's just really why I chose it. And um, again, to bring awareness to the whole situation. Thank you. And I, I really appreciate you sharing that. Um, it sounds like my next question was going to be in terms of, you know, what role do you want to see yourself in with, with this cause? But you said, you know, you have a foundation and just kind of spreading the word, which, you know, I applaud the three of you because this is a tough topic. And this is also for a long time was a taboo topic. And I think as you were saying, it can be so helpful for others to see professional football players talking about mental health, letting themselves be vulnerable and devoting themselves to these causes. What is it like as an NFL player to, to talk about your mental health or promote help seeking behavior when it has for so long been, there's been such a stereotype when it comes to masculinity and you know being tough, shoving it down and getting through the day. What is it like now for you guys? Daniel, you want to start? Um, really, like you said, it's kind of, you know, you're putting yourself out there a little bit. Um, you're you're in a, a place where you have to be very uh, strong and tough. You're this that type of industry. Um, but, you know, honestly, it's when you have guys around here like Lance and Skur and, you know, guys that you know who have been through stuff, um, and, you know, we all kind of lean on each other a little bit. We're, you know, we're all competing with each other, but we're all teammates and, you know, we're all still a part of the same human race at the end of the day. And so, um, you know, sometimes it, you can feel a little bit vulnerable putting yourself out there talking about stuff like this. But, um, you know, I think the type of environment that we have here at the Rams is, um, you know, we're very open and accepting of that. And, you know, we're big advocates of, you know, if you, if you need help, there's somebody here who can help you and there's, there's options, there's resources. And, um, I think we do a really good job of, you know, making those things available and, you know, making people aware of them as well. I agree. I, I think that we do a really good job and, um, and I know that we've helped a lot of people, especially younger generations who look up to you guys. 
and realize, hey, it's okay, you know, I can get through this somehow. And, you know, oh, there, some people might not even know there's a mental health hotline. And, um, and so this just adds to that awareness. Lance, you mentioned that you lost your friend, you were younger. Mm -hmm. So in terms of talking about like from a male perspective at a younger age, what was that like for you to deal with it and address mental health as an issue? Uh, so I guess for me at first, uh, he was kind of, I didn't really like see at first that he was going through that. I just kind of thought, you know, he just has a, like a change of heart, change of mind about who he wants to be with and who, you know, wants to spend his time with, you know, I, I was fine with that. But, um, you know, back then I, I wish I would have known that, you know, that, you know, he is struggling mentally. And I feel like at a, at a young age, you, that's not something you think about. It's like, you know, oh, you're, you're, a, you're a happy kid. You know, you don't have any responsibility. You just, you know, play your sports and go to school and do this and that. But, um, you know, it, it happens, um, you know, to all ages, you know, like Matt said, uh, you know, about his father and, um, like you, it, it happens and, you know, um, I feel like as professional athletes, you know, we're, we're in the spotlight. Everyone just sees like who we are, like on the field, you know, under the big lights. And at the end of the day, like Daniel said, you know, we're all humans, we're all people. We all go through the same stuff and, um, you know, we all, you know, feel a certain type of way, you know, about it. And, um, yeah, just to, just to have that happen to me, you know, I always want to be, um, because that happened to me, I want to, you know, always be a shoulder for someone to lean on, you know, cry on, just someone to, someone to vent to, you know, sometimes all it takes is just, uh, just letting it out. And, you know, I want to be that and be whatever I can for whoever is, uh, you know, struggling mentally. Yeah. Yeah. So you really took from it how you can be there for others yeah. and not overlooking things. Because I'll, I'll, uh, I'll be a little more open and honest about it. Um, when he was going through that, you know, he kind of, we kind of, you know, pushed each other aside and just kind of like, I feel like we just kind of, you know, kind of ended our friendship right there. And so for me, this like really hits home with me because, you know, when he passed, you know, we were, you know, technically not friends anymore, you know. And so I got to live with like I said, for the rest of my life, I got to, you know, move on knowing that my best friend when I was younger, you know, we weren't friends when he passed. And so, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't be there for him. That's, you know, one of the biggest regrets I have in my life is um, not being able to, you know, be there for my friend when he was struggling. Yeah, that's hard. And, and knowing that you can't change that. And now with that knowledge, the good thing is that you can use these experiences not that you would have ever chosen for them to happen, but you can use them moving forward mm -hmm. to help others. And I think, you know, some of the stuff you're saying in terms of um, just people not even realizing, you know, when you think about suicide, it's it seems so foreign sometimes, but it's much more common than people realize. And especially among men, I think it's on average, one male takes his own life every minute of every day that's mind blowing. And, and so by people learning about this, you know, hopefully we can provide tools and, and just relationships, whether you're a professional or not, that can support them. Yeah. What is it like for you in the NFL and, and having gone through what you did and then having to shift your focus and play? Yeah. Um, I think what a silver lining was. Um, so I didn't, I wasn't on a team uh, the whole off season, wasn't on a team during training camp, OTAs and, you know, Rams I didn't sign till week three. And I kind of took that as a time to really focus on like taking care of like my mental health, being there um, for my brothers, my mom, um, and really everything that goes along with losing a parent, you know, I had to help uh, my brothers pack up my parents' house because they were moving out of that. Um, just, I think that was the biggest silver lining. It's like, you know, it was kind of like a I don't know, God saying like, I'm not going to give you football back until you deal with what's going on with your family. And I really took it as an opportunity to, you know, hit a lot of the issues that I had head on. Um, whether what, like in the past with uh, football and even right now, like you said, with grief, um, 
because you go through like all the different stages of grief and it's not you go through one at a time you feel all of them at once or you'll feel one in one moment and another at a different time and you know seeking help from a psychologist and really just um, dealing with those issues head on made me you know focus on what's really important how do I handle this situation and I think from a NFL player perspective I mean it just shows the human side of all of us and that we have struggles um, we have things going on in our lives um, that are tough and difficult and um, hopefully gives like inspiration to other people who are struggling or who have lost someone to suicide um, that you know there is ways to go about getting the right help um, just like the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention like there are resources out there for people to use and um, yeah, I think just highlighting that and hopefully, you know, if it helps just one person, you know, that's what I think about too. You know, it's like your one friend, my, my dad, like that's one person. And if it can help just one person, I think it makes all the world a difference because we've all felt some kind of loss and know what that loss feels like. And um, yeah, I think just having that platform is, is great. I love that you said you can see the human side of players, which I think is a big point with this whole, you know, my cause, my cleats. And, you know, I really harp on this in my rookie sessions, but in terms of your identity, your whole identity, you know, needs to be and is more than being a football player. And it's through this type of cause that others can learn about that and prioritize it because that is so important um, to familiarize yourself with your own identity and keep building it. Um, before we get to the actual cleats, I have one more question. Um, as a sports psychologist, I focus on both mental health and performance of athletes. And I feel that they're very intertwined, um, often almost impossible to separate. Do you feel that with these causes and everything that led you to them, do you feel that and are you prone to separate the two or are you even able to do you find it easier to completely shift your focus what works for you as an athlete when you go to practice when you're competing i can start it so for me um i feel like i do a pretty good job of you know being able to separate it like when i come in to work every day and come out to practice in the game like i'm here for football you know i'm not i'm not trying to you know, disregard, you know, all the feelings and thoughts and just emotions that go on outside of football. But like once I'm here, like, you know, tunnel vision, I'm like, I'm here for football. And then after that, when I get done for the day, then I'll be able to, you know, handle and address my other problems I, I may have. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I can speak from just experience, like in 2020, dealing with like a whole bunch of issues, like what was difficult for me and part of like my anxiety and all this stuff was I couldn't separate it. Like I couldn't separate like the anxious feelings that I had when I got home and when I brought it to the facility. Like it was just like, I couldn't separate it. And so what took me a while was to like recognize like, okay, if I feel anxious, how do I like calm myself down? Because a lot of times it's me just like, thinking in the future like thinking of scenarios or you know wanting to be a perfectionist like oh i want to make sure that i get you know all my assignments correct and this and that and for me um just having techniques like breathing techniques or just you know making sure i'm more present um things like journaling like that's something that i've really picked up on it's just like just being able to get the thoughts that are in my head and just writing them down for five minutes i'm just like that that helps me so much um so i think that's been part of like my growth um in that way as well and now i just have like a much healthier relationship with football um i've learned just like having a new perspective just enjoying it having fun 
taking, you know, the good days with the good and taking the bad as, you know what, it's a bad day, but, you know, it's going to get better and we're going to, you know, this, it's a lesson to be learned. And so um, that's the biggest thing as well is just, I've just learned um, techniques on how to, uh, you know, shift my focus, make sure I'm present in the moment with meetings, football, practice. Um, and like you said, just kind of dealing with the emotions as they come, but also doing it in a healthy way. Do you have any thoughts on that, Daniel? Um, I kind of went a similar route as a Lance, but I often try and use my struggles outside of football um, to kind of help me in a way, mm. try and use them as stepping stones and, and building blocks. Um, you know, especially, you know, on game days when you're thinking about everything it took for you to get to where you are, every single trial, tribulation, uh, every roadblock, everything that was supposed to stop you from getting to where you wanted to be and how you overcame that. And, and then I try and use that, you know, as fuel, like, um, you know, if I made it through all that, everything I have to do today is nothing. Like all I have to do is, you know, go run a play or, or play whatever, it, exactly. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, it using all of that to minimize the situation that you're in and make it, you know, seem more, more normal or, you know, less, less like a huge moment. You know what I mean? So, um, I kind of, I like to look, flip it on its side and kind of look at it like that. And it sounds like it also helps you put things in perspective Yeah. at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. The important thing is, is that, you know, if they realize they could use the support that they feel comfortable doing it and that they have the resources to do it. If I had a, a coach through college, uh, his kind of thing was good play, next play, bad play, next play. And this is something I'm still trying to, you know, work on myself, but, um, just try to trying to use that in life. You know, you're going to go through ups and downs. You're going to have your, you know, your good and bad moments. But for me, you know, you have a, you have a good moment, a good play, you know, look back on it, reflect, you know, see what you can do better and you but move on, you know, don't, don't be so just amped up and excited about what you just did. You know, you gotta, you know, focus forward on the assignment ahead and, you know, vice versa with the bad play, you know, don't, don't dwell on the past, you know, like if you keep dwelling on the past, your future is only going to, you know, it's going to, it's going to be worse. Like as far as just like playing, if I dwell on a, Let's say I drop a pass, you know, I come into that, the, the, ne the huddle for the next play. And for me, I'm most like, if I'm, you know, tripping about that, you know, thinking about that, that last play, I just dropped the ball, that next play, I'm probably like eight out of 10 times gonna drop that next pass. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, like I said, good play, next play, bad play, next play, you know, learn from good or bad, learn from it, um, you know, look at it, but, you know, put it behind you and keep going. Yeah, don't dwell. Yeah. Which again is such a parallel to life that you can use in terms of moving forward. Um, as we look at our cleats here, it kind of reminds me of The Price is Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's one message that you would want somebody to take from your cause and what we're talking about today? If there was one thing, one takeaway, or one thing you would say to someone else what i would say uh you matter just uh you know that goes kind of without going into detail about it but i feel like uh whoever's you know struggling with mental mental health mental illness um no, no one wants to say anything because you know no one wants to i feel like it's an embarrassing topic mm -hmm. you know once that like actually like comes out of your mouth and like you like you know like put it into life you know i feel like that's something uh, you know, people want to, or like they're, they're embarrassed about it. And then same thing, you know, a, as a friend, no one wants to, you know, assume that their friend is, you know, struggling mentally. No, no one wants to, you know, have that, no one wants to sit down and have that conversation with them. And so I just feel like, uh, with the, this, you matter, that kind of, you know, really sticks with me for, on both perspectives of that. Just, uh, you know, if, if you are struggling, you know, I, I can come to anyone here and just, you know, let them know how I'm feeling. And then, with that being said, I feel like there's no one, no one here in this, you know, locker room, this facility with, within this organization that's going to, you know, push that to the side. Mm -hmm. Or judge you. For yeah, it. exactly. And I feel like that's just, the, you know, the biggest thing with people who, you know, who are struggling mentally, you know, embarrassment, judgment, you know, that list can go on and on. But I feel like um, once you do let that out and you try to have that conversation with someone you love and you do care about, 
you're, you're going to realize more than you ever did before that you have not just that person, but you have a lot of people who care about you and want the best for you. Yeah. And those two words are so powerful because it's not conditional. You matter no matter what, no matter how you're feeling, no yeah. matter what you're going through, you, you matter. And um, that's really the essence of, you know, what this kind of cause is about. Um, Matt, how about you? What, what would you hope that somebody would take away? Um, I would say that like overall things do get better. Um, my dad, he always used to tell me, you know, just hold on for one more day. It's kind of like that song. It was, it's like an older song. Wilson Phillips. Yes. I know it. <laughs> and he, cause you know, he, he obviously had a very high stress job and, um, you know, him and I, he, he loved watching me play football, and but he also under, understood that I'm in a high-stress job as well. And uh, that's just one thing I just always remember him telling me, like, when things are really tough, just, like, hold on for one more day and things, like, and then when you do, that next day gets a little better and a little better. And that there's always someone for you to talk to. Um, and like we've all kind of said that you're not alone. It's okay to ask for help. Um, and you know, whatever it takes to get someone help. Um, sometimes you have to do that as well. And yeah, I, I think that's the biggest thing. Um, you know, suicide, uh, unfortunately, um, is a permanent thing and it prevents, the ability for things to get better and you know taking mental health seriously and calling texting finding resources um things can only get better and you have 988 on your cleats talk about what that is in yeah case people don't know yep that's like the uh, hotline number that people can text who um are dealing with like a mental crisis know someone that is, and they can text that number and um, use that as a resource. And people from the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention will be there to um, help those people um, navigate through a crisis. And also if someone has lost someone from suicide, like they're also there to help navigate those people as well. And so, um, yeah, I thought that was an important just touch onto the yeah. case. Yeah, I mean, that's fairly new. And I think that that brings a lot of awareness to that. And and just to have that, you know, shows how far we've come in yeah. terms of really narrowing the focus to this kind of support. And I love the point of view that you shared in terms of, you know, just one more day. Sometimes you have to break things down into smaller increments and, and that makes it more possible to move on. Yeah. And maybe it's just one more hour whatever works for you but i i think that's a great way to look at it yeah for sure yeah daniel talk about your cleats again the mustaches are key in terms of representing movember movember i really was just a the mustaches was really just kind of just people not shaving in the month of november in you know in support of the the foundation okay um, but really what I wanted, it's on Lance's cleats, but really the message I want people to know is that you're not alone. Like these are things that everybody or a lot of people go through and you know, you're not out of the ordinary. You're not, you know, different in a bad way because you're dealing with, you know, mental health issues or anything like that. Um, you know, there are other, there's other people like you. It's not, it's not wrong to feel the way that you're feeling. Um, and like kind of what everybody here has been saying there's there's resources there's ways to get help um and there's people you can reach out to always it was a great discussion and i again thank you so much for allowing yourselves to be vulnerable and i know that it's going to inspire a lot of people to seek help and get support should they need it